Thank you for joining us on Synthesis Workshop. Today I'm very excited to be joined by Tyler Allred for a Research Spotlight episode. Tyler got his bachelor's degree at UC Davis before coming to UCLA for his master's degree as well as his PhD. During his doctoral work in the Heron Lab, he worked on a very challenging natural product called Marinosin A and also wrote a really great review on the synthesis of complex targets for applications in drug development and ChemRev. You can find a link in the episode details below. After finishing up at UCLA in 2018, Tyler joined the Overman Group at UC Irvine, and today he's going to talk about some of the synthetic work he's been doing there. With that, I'll hand it over to you, Tyler. Thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you for that kind introduction, Matt. I'm excited to be here and discuss some of our recent work in the Overman Group, specifically our novel sequence to construct concave substitute cis dioxabicyclo 330 octanones and how that sequence was applied for the synthesis of rearranged sponge and diterpenoids McFarland and C and didrolite A. Rearranged sponge and diterpenoids are a large and diverse family of natural products. The majority of these structures are isolated in nature from marine sponges, such as Dendrilla rosea or spongivores, mainly comprised of nudibranchs, such as the Californian blue chromodora. Members of this natural product family are derived from extensive oxidation and fragmentation of the spongy and skeleton, as shown here with the C9-C11 bond being a common target for oxidative cleavage. A large number of rearranged spongy and diterpenoids contain a cis-2,8-dioxabicyclo-330 octane 3 ohn moiety, with a lipophilic C14 fragment appended to either the convex or concave face of the bicycle as exemplified by Shell of Island A and McFarland and C, respectively. Concave substitution of the bicycle is a much more common occurrence in this natural product family. In addition to their intricate chemical structure, a wide array of biological activities have been reported in the literature for rearranged spongy and diterpenoids. However, our lab's interest in these structures was drawn mainly from the unique Golgi modifying activity of McFarland and E and its simpler congeners. The Overman Lab initiated a synthetic campaign towards these natural product scaffolds some time ago, which has culminated with the construction of Shell of Island A and Avely Violin, as well as several other members of this family. However, it has thus far proved exceedingly difficult to construct the concave substitute members of this natural product family. The central challenge in the synthesis of these structures is the stereo-controlled construction of the C8-C14 bond. When considering the two-dimensional structures of the concave versus a convex substituted by cyclooctanone, it is difficult to understand how much more of a challenge the concave series presents. However, when we examine the three-dimensional structures provided by X-ray crystallography studies, a striking illustration of the inherent steric strain within the system reveals itself. When examining the C8-C14 bond of Shell of Island A, it is quite standard at 1.546 angstroms. In contrast, the steric congestion caused by the bulky substituent on the concave face of McFarland C results in an unusually long bond length of 1.577 angstroms. This inherent steric strain poses considerable difficulty when exploring synthetic sequences aimed at this structural motif. Our initial retrosynthetic analysis of these structures derives the natural product from a final hydrolysis of the chiral auxiliary and acetylation. We postulated that the concave substituted bicyclooctanone could be accessed from this tricyclic lactone in some manner. The challenging C8-C14 bond would be constructed by a photocatalyzed radical fragment coupling, or what is more commonly referred to as a photocatalyzed Giza reaction. The nucleophilic tertiary radical could be derived from the cesium oxalate octahydronaphthalene fragment, shown here, and the radical acceptor would be this chlorobutenolide. In the case of dendrolite A, the same sequence would be utilized with the exception of using a perhydroazuline oxalate salt, which is not shown. Prior to discussing the synthetic sequences, I would like to discuss the mechanism of the key radical fragment coupling step in a little more detail. These photocatalyzed Giza reactions utilize an iridium photocatalyst, such as the one shown here. When the iridium photocatalyst is irradiated with blue LED lights, the complex enters the excited state and becomes a very potent oxidant. The electron-rich cesium oxalate undergoes a single electron transfer process with the excited state catalyst, generating the reduced iridium-2 species. The resultant oxala radical then undergoes a decarboxylation event to generate an alkoxy carbonyl radical, which undergoes a second decarboxylation event to afford a tertiary carbon-based radical species. This radical is highly nucleophilic due to the inductive electron donating effect of the three alkyl groups and therefore can react with electron-poor olefins, 
such as the butenolide shown here. The resultant stabilized alpha radical can then engage the reduced iridium photocatalyst in the single electron transfer process, regenerating the starting iridium catalyst and this beta substitute lactone enolate, which can be quenched by a proton source, as shown here, or by other electrophilic species for radical anion crossover reaction. In order to explore potential ways of constructing the concave substituted dioxabicyclo 330 octanone, we originally initiated studies toward a simple model system with methylcyclohexyl as the beta substituent. We believe this model could be constructed from this lactone, which is easily accessed in a scalable three-step sequence. We initially explored a variety of hydrogenation or conjugate reduction processes. However, the best conditions only provided at best a 1.3 to 1 ratio of our desired sin to the undesired anti products. From there, we considered forming the system from an iodolactonization followed by a reduction sequence. However, this process provided exclusively the convex substituted system and was therefore not useful. We then explored a hydroboration carbonylation approach, which proved futile. We considered elaborating on our established route to the convex substituted system and performed a dehydration iodoacetylation reduction approach. However, this provided an equal molar mixture of the desired to undesired concave to convex systems, which was not synthetically useful. We examined the recently developed nickel mediated reductive cross coupling processes. However, these systems tended to hydrolyze faster than cyclize. We also considered radical or CH insertion methods. However, hydrolysis was the main issue here as well. At this stage, we realized that in order to access the concave substituted moiety, we would need to block the alpha position in some manner to prevent epimerization. Our first thought was to use oxygen as a blocking group for the alpha position, as this could be removed through beta elimination when the dioxabicyclo 330 octanone was formed. The construction of the model system is as follows. A photoredox mediated Giza reaction between cesium methyl cyclohexyl oxalate and this simple butenolide affords this beta substituted lactone. This lactone can then be enolized with lithium hexamethyl disilazide and then treated with ethyl glyoxylate to afford an inconsequential diastereomeric mixture of alcohols. These alcohols are then treated with trifluoroacetic anhydride and the intermediate trifluoroacetate is eliminated in situ by the addition of DBU, affording the corresponding E and Z alkylidine lactones. The alkylidine lactones were then subjected to a Mukiyama hydration, which resulted in an exclusive installation of the hydroxyl group on the alpha face of the lactone. This assignment was corroborated by X-ray crystallographic analysis. The tertiary alcohol was then derivatized as the trimethylsilyl ether, which was then treated with excess diacetyl aluminum hydride to afford a mixture of lactols. The crude lactols were then oxidized with PCC to afford the concave substituted bicyclooctanone. The methyl acetal and trimethylsilyl ether were then hydrolyzed with a monophasic aqueous hydrochloric acid THF solution, followed by bisacetylation. Fortunately, the beta acetyl group eliminates spontaneously with dry loading on silica gel, affording this butenolide. The resultant butenolide was then subjected to conjugate reduction conditions that were developed by the Buckwell group, which affords our concave substituted cis 28 dioxabicyclo 330 octane 3 ohm model system in nine steps from the starting lactone. So, with a viable route to the concave substitute by cyclooctanones, we set out on adapting it for the synthesis of McFarlane and C in dendrobial light A. Returning to our retrosynthetic analysis of McFarlane and C, we can now begin exploring the synthesis of the two key fragments. We will begin with the cesium oxalate fragment 1. The octahydronaphylene moiety is synthesized starting from 4,4-dimethylcyclohexeno. Alpha iodination followed by koribakshi shibata reduction affords this enantio-enriched allylic alcohol. The alcohol was then derivatized as the phosphate. This phosphate was then subjected to a copper-mediated SN2 prime displacement with these functionalized Grignard reagents. A Nagishi cross-coupling with vinyl magnesium bromide converts the vinyl iodide into the 1,3-diene, which is then treated with catalytic 8-6-naphthal chromium tricarbonyl in the presence of hydrogen to affect a 1,4 hydrogenation. Treatment of either dioxalane with catalytic acid promotes deprotection followed by activation of the resultant carbonyl, which results in an acid-catalyzed carbonyl-ene reaction to construct the octahydronaphylene core. 
This process produces a second ring with high diastereic selectivity to afford either the secondary or tertiary axial alcohols. The stereochemistry of the axial tertiary alcohol was confirmed by derivatization as the paranitrobenzoate ester in X-ray crystallographic analysis. The tertiary alcohol was converted to the mixed methyl oxalate and then saponified with cesium hydroxide to afford the key cesium oxalate radical precursor. Unfortunately, when this material was irradiated with blue LEDs in the presence of a photocatalyst and butenolide acceptor, the desired Giza addict was not observed. Instead, there was exclusive formation of this bridge butyrolactone product. When considering the mechanism of this process, the cesium oxalate is oxidized to the oxaloradical, which undergoes a decarboxylation event to afford the alkoxycarbonyl radical. This intermediate then undergoes a facile 5 exo trig cyclization to afford the butyrolactone with a beta alkyl radical, which then undergoes either H atom transfer or reduction by the photocatalyst and protonation. Although cyclizations of alkoxycarbonyl radicals are known, we thought that bond formation at the beta beta substituted alkene center would be slower than the second decarboxylation event. However, these results clearly indicated that the pseudo-axial oriented alkoxycarbonyl radical cyclizes at a much faster rate than decarboxylation. We postulated that this reactivity could be circumvented if we generated the pseudo-equatorial alkoxycarbonyl radical, which would be oriented further away from the appended olefin. In order to access the desired pseudo-equatorial oxalate, we started from the secondary alcohol derived from the carbonyl E cyclization. This material was oxidized with desmartin periodinate to afford an unstable beta-gamma unsaturated ketone. Allowing this material to sit overnight exposed to the atmosphere results in auto-oxidation to generate this alkyl peroxide, which was unambiguously assigned by X-ray crystallography. In order to prevent this auto-oxidation process, the ketone is used immediately after formation. Treatment of the ketone with Yamamoto's MAD catalyst coordinates the ketone in the more sterically accessible position, which forces nucleophiles to approach the ketone from the more sterically hindered phase. Treatment of the coordinated ketone aluminum complex with methyl magnesium bromide provides the desired pseudo-equatorial alcohol with very high diastereic selectivity. This alcohol was then converted to the oxalate salt by the aforementioned oxalylation and saponification procedure. The synthesis of the chlorobutenolide acceptor begins with a palladium catalyzed acetylization reaction between this alenyl derivative of D menthol and chlorosinamyl alcohol. The resultant acetal is then subjected to ring closing metathesis with Hoiveda Grub's second generation catalyst to provide a dihydrofuran. This material was then oxidized at the activated allylic methylene position to produce the desired chlorobutenolide. We were now poised to join the two fragments by the photocatalyzed Giza reaction, which provides this alpha chlorolactone intermediate, which can be reduced in situ by the addition of tributylamine and continued irradiation for several hours. This process provides the desired lactone with high diastereic selectivity. The lactone was then subjected to the aldol dehydration sequence developed for the model system to provide these alkylidine lactones. We found that the modified Mukiyama conjugate hydration conditions developed by the Shinvi lab were optimal for this system, which provides the desired tertiary alcohol and leaves the octhydronaphylene olefin intact. The resultant tertiary alcohol was then derivatized as the trimethylsilyl ether and treated with excess diisobutyl aluminum hydride. However, we did not obtain the desired bicyclooctanone. Instead, we isolated the rearranged valerolactone, where one of the rings had opened. This compound is thought to be formed by initial reduction of the lactone and ester moieties, followed by elimination of the ethoxide and generation of an aldehyde. The aldehyde, which is activated by the Lewis acidic aluminum species, is then engaged by the pendant tetrahydrofuran oxygen to generate the cationic oxabicyclo 221 heptane system. The bicycle then fragments to generate a different aldehyde, which is then reduced by a diisobutyl aluminum hydride. The lactal alcohol is then oxidized with PCC to afford the Valero lactone product. We briefly explored using Bronsted or loose acids to force the system back into the desired dioxa bicyclo 330 octanone to no avail. However, when we used a more nucleophilic source of hydride and a large excess for a short period of time, we could isolate the desired bicyclooctanone following PCC oxidation. This material can then be treated with the same in-game sequence developed for the model system, specifically hydrolysis followed by acetylation, where the elimination could be achieved in situ by the addition of triethylamine to provide the penultimate butenolide. 
This material could then be subjected to the aforementioned conjugate reduction conditions to afford McFarland and C, with the longest linear sequence of 20 steps, 25 steps overall. In order to show the generality of our approach to the concave substituted bicyclooctanones, we also initiated a synthetic campaign towards dendrolite A. We started with this lactone, which is accessible in 10 steps from Fenchone, where the key fragment coupling method was utilized for the C8C14 bond formation. The lactone could be subjected to the same aldol dehydration Mukayama hydration sequence to afford the desired tertiary alcohol. Interestingly, the 1,1 disubstituted olefin on the cis perhydroazuline substituent reacted at a slightly faster rate than the alkylity in lactone. This reactivity is in trend with what is known about olefin reactivity towards metal catalyzed hydrogen atom transfer processes. We were not concerned about the undesired tertiary alcohol because we believed that it could be eliminated later on. The diol was treated with the conditions optimized in our McFarland and C synthesis, specifically treatment with excess lithium aluminum hydride, followed by PCC oxidation, which surprisingly afforded the regenerated 1,1 disubstituted olefin, as well as the desired bicyclooctanone. When considering why these very mild conditions were able to dehydrate the system, a three-dimensional analysis provides a compelling answer. The C17 and C18 methyl groups are locked in an unfavorable synpentane interaction. This steric interaction lowers the energy required for E1 elimination of the tertiary alcohol, such that the mildly acidic conditions of PCC are enough to facilitate the elimination. At this stage, we were poised to finish dendrolite A with the robust steps developed for the model system. Surprisingly, the lactol was unreactive to the hydrolysis conditions developed for McFarland and C. Fortunately, we were able to determine that the slightly more forcing conditions of trifluoroacetic acid at 35 degrees Celsius provided the hydrolyzed intermediate lactol, which was then converted to the butenolide shown here through acetylation. The aforementioned conjugate reduction conditions afforded dendrolide A in 18 steps, longest linear sequence, and 23 steps overall. In conclusion, we have developed an efficient route to the concave substitute cis 28 dioxabicyclo 330 octane 3 ohms which relied on a highly diastereoselective mukayama hydration to install a tertiary alcohol at the 2 position of the lactone, which oriented the two substituents in a syn relationship. This sequence, when considered in conjunction with the previous work in the Overman Laboratory on the convex substitute model system, allows for a unified divergent entry to either C6 stereoisomeric bicyclooctanone. The utility of this sequence towards concave substituted bicyclooctanones was exemplified with the construction of the rearranged spongy and diterpenoids McFarland and C and dendrolite A, where the crucial C8-C14 bond was constructed by a powerful photoredox mediated radical fragment coupling. Additionally, a highly diastereoselective carbonyl ene cyclization was critical for the construction of the octahydronaphylene substituent of McFarland and C. Finally, I would like to thank the team of people that were integral in these studies, namely Larry, Andre, Pung, and Greg. Andre, Pung, and Greg were instrumental in the early stages of the project and the synthesis of the octahydronaphylene fragment. I'm also very grateful to Larry, who has been a fantastic mentor, and I'm incredibly honored to be his final postdoc. Additionally, I would like to thank Dr. Nick Weirs and now Professor Spencer Pitra for their invaluable insights. I'm also grateful to the members of the Rignofsky and Vanderwall groups who shared their time to brainstorm ideas for the synthesis. And I thank the NIH and NIGMS who provided funding for the Overman Laboratory during these investigations. Finally, thank you for taking the time to watch this presentation. Please feel free to contact me if you have any questions about this work. Thanks again, Matt, for the opportunity to present our chemistry. Thank you for joining us for another Research Spotlight episode, and thank you to Tyler for taking the time to share this work with us. To support this initiative, help us out by telling your peers about this resource. Check our website, synthesis-workshop.com, and follow us on Twitter to stay up to date. See you all next time.